is rich in tradition. It's like what has come before with the painters, what has come before, what styles have come before, what techniques have come before. In this third one, we have a CGI sequence. It's been challenging because it's so outside of what we normally do in the WIC world. It's just been a different experience. We set such higher standards on the first two movies that you always have to kind of one-up it. We got to put things on the edge of what's real and still make it cinematic. There are a lot of influences in the film, and one of the things that I saw, I saw a picture called Villainous, and it turned out that Chad had seen it. Villainous was a great, great film, great action movie, great Asian cinema, and they had a great motorcycle sequence in it. And it's been the first film in a while where me and my son were impressed, like, oh, that was a really cool idea. We we're like, well, we don't want to copy it. We don't want to do this. We're like, you know what? Not only we're going to copy it, we're going to try and figure it out. They came together and they were like, hmm. On the first John Wick, we had uh, an extremely limited budget. Most of what we did practically on long takes is because we simply couldn't afford a second camera. <laughs> and at the time, they came from a very limited budget too, and they did something that was fresh. It was new. It was a new way to kind of shoot this bike chase. The first couple times we watched it, me and my stunt team, my VFX team, for the life of us, we couldn't figure out exactly how they did it. So in this obsessive way, we're like, let's just try to figure it out, just for our own sake. And we started trying to figure it out, and we're like, oh, this is what they did. This is really interesting. It was like a puzzle we tried to piece together. It wasn't as simple as we thought it was. It was a lot of work, and it was a lot of creative skill. This is tipping our hat to them. You know, it's like, good job. Good fucking job. <laughs> It's our first full CGI action sequence. This is probably one of the most complicated visual effects sequences I've been involved in, purely from a choreography standpoint. It's so different than what we normally do. There's more of a partnership with stunts and visual effects than people know. That way you can kind of do more low budget stuff with using effects, I don't have to use practical effects. So I think that's an important partnership in terms of action filmmaking now. And you can kind of get these kind of amazing shots you couldn't do practically. They designed this motorcycle sequence that involved live action and in the moment, and then working in a computer-generated space. When you do that to try and make it look real, that's the challenge. Like, how do you get the vicissitude? We shot the motorcycle sequence on the Verrazano Bridge. It's this big suspension bridge, and it's multi-levels. And it was really great because you could see New York in the background, and it really made for a great, spectacular setting. Everything we did had to have a visceral reaction to the audience. When we saw that, I thought it was a, the concept was awesome. Like, one thing was kind of stationary, and the other two were moving, or two things were stationary, and only one thing was moving. So we're like, well, we can one-up that. We can make everything moving in the frame, so there's not really a cheat. Tonight's craziness is the second half of the motorcycle shinobi fight. This has been something we've been working on for a couple months to try and get this thing right. The stunt team worked out the choreography first. That was super important. You have to get the fight beats working, and then everything else will come after that. Then you start working on cameras, and then, of course, you have to adjust the fight because you want to make sure the camera looks at the right thing at the right time. We did yet another test of that where we shot it on green screen, and we realized that what the stunt team had been working on actually wasn't 100% the right size by about a couple of feet per lane. Yeah, over there. Jeez. Well, a couple of feet per lane is a big deal. We redid the whole thing, but that was two days of shooting that we spent doing just the layout to make sure we could do it. And from that, we discovered there were certain things that were working really well, certain things that actually didn't work quite well. But the good thing is it taught us timing, and it taught us what the choreography really, truly needed to be. And so the stunt team did an incredible job of making sure that all that stuff really, really worked. Once we had that, then we were ready to actually do the action. came up with this concept of having motorcycles that were on these pivots because they wanted to have mobility, and then they wanted to move them in this green room. So then there were people pushing them in green suits. Yeah, we just wanted to put some dudes in green suits, really. It was pretty great. I just wanted to embarrass the stunt team. This suit sucks. So then it became this dance. It's like dance choreography. There's movements. There's a there's a language of movement that we have to, you know, you have to play to. The choreography is so interlaced between the guys pushing the bikes, the actual fight choreography, and the camera move. 
you're on a motorcycle, you win machines, but that could move. You know? We could literally have all of the behaviors and leaning and hitting each other and choreography. Doing the kind of reality, virtual reality dream action sequence. So it's motorcycles with swords. Chad Stahelski is extremely relentless, but that's how you get what you want in this business, right? That, that's how you get John Wick part one done. That's how you get part two done. And part three, to go bigger and crazier, you have to be relentless. You have to have the vision, and he absolutely does. This film is filled with logistical issues because of all the complicated work that goes into it, but ultimately, he does have a vision for what he wants. And, you know, he works with everybody to make sure that that vision is achievable. I love working with Chad, and to be able to keep telling these stories is great. And for me to have the opportunity to continue to tell the story with Chad's vision and everyone involved is really exciting and thrilling, and hopefully people will enjoy it. I'd like to see the manager.